Justin Trudeau, the History Reviser. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Now I know that you maple leafers have been waiting for some time for an analysis of your Prime Minister. Justin Pierre James Trudeau, who probably sees himself as a Christ-like figure, not least because he was born on December the 25th, back in 1971, and he's the second youngest Prime Minister in Canadian history. He's also the first to be the child of a previous holder of the post, as he's the eldest son of Pierre Trudeau. He has been Prime Minister since 2015, and he led the Liberals to a minority government victory in the 2019 federal election. He was investigated for a third time by the Ethics Commissioner for his part in the W.E. charity scandal, but was cleared of wrongdoing. In the 2021 federal election, he led the Liberals to another minority government, bringing about an election that probably nobody wanted or needed. During that third term, he invoked the Emergencies Act in response to the Freedom Convoy protests, which was the first time the Act had been brought into force since it was enacted in 1988. There is considerable controversy with regard to Mr Trudeau and his premiership. There is significant evidence to be analysed with regard to ascertaining what he is. Nevertheless, we're going to dive straight in with an example of his behaviour and then to analyse it to see what direction might this take us. He has recently been accused of rewriting history by claiming he never forced anyone to get vaccinated. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau generated controversy for recently claiming that he never forced anyone in his country to get the immunisation throughout the course of the pandemic. In a clip that was shared to Twitter, Trudeau declared that he merely incentivized people to get the vaccine while not forcing them to do so. Accordingly, there is video evidence of him stating that he merely incentivized people to get the vaccine, that he didn't force them to do so. This clip generated a huge backlash online, with users claiming that the leader's comments stand in contrast with his orders. Orders requiring vaccines for various groups of Canadians, including a mandate for all federal workers and federally regulated Canadian transportation sectors. Accordingly, there is evidence of him saying, I merely incentivised them. I didn't force them to do so. But is there any evidence that demonstrates that he actually did did force people, that he ordered it, that he mandated it. Well, the Canadian government's mandates for cross-border truck drivers were so despised among some truckers that they orchestrated the Freedom Convoy, which was a protest of historic proportions in the nation's capital that spread throughout the country. It would appear Trudeau provided a sanitised retelling of how he implemented COVID-19 policies when he had a talk with German President Steinmeier at the University of Ottawa recently. In a clip of the talk, Trudeau defended his implementation of the vaccine, arguing that he followed scientists' advice that vaccination was going to be the way through this. He also then claimed he gave incentives for people to get immunised rather than force them to do so. He said, And therefore, while not forcing anyone to get vaccinated, 
I chose to make sure all the incentives and all the protections were there to encourage Canadians to get vaccinated, he said. Earlier in the speech, the Canadian leader acknowledged there were people who suffered side effects from the vaccine, but argued that the rate of harm was higher among the population that did not take the shot. In response to the claim, Chief Nerd posted a video of Trudeau from more than a year ago directly endorsing COVID vaccine mandates. In that clip from February 2022, Trudeau said, I can understand frustrations with mandates, but mandates are the way to avoid further restrictions or having to be restricted. Twitter users blasted Trudeau for denying what he had done to Canadians during the pandemic. Canadian criminal lawyer David Anber tweeted, This man is a menace to society and the chief purveyor of misinformation and disinformation. Professor, evolutionary behavioural scientist and author Gad Saad tweeted, He is truly something else. Lawyer and prominent conservative Harmeet Dillon simply replied, Lies. Businessman and author Edward Dow torched the Prime Minister, writing, The gaslighting here is epic, and all the folks who bought into this nonsense have been punked. Your dear leader now says he never forced anyone. Those of us who supported him have effectively been abandoned. Now, that's the situation. And therefore, what is actually going on here? Well, let's start with it as a position of, is he correct? When he says, I didn't force anybody to get vaccinated, I merely offered incentives, is he right? Well, the evidence does not appear to support that, does it? Because the video that had been posted states... Mandates are the way to avoid further restriction. A mandate isn't an incentive. A mandate is telling somebody, you must. It's mandatory. You must do this. You must take this action. Accordingly, for him to suggest, therefore, that he did say that it was incentives and encouragement rather than mandates, is not borne out by the evidence. So, we first of all consider, is he correct in what he stated? The answer is, no, he is not. Thus, this provides us with three alternatives. First of all, could it be that it's fallible memory? That he thought that he incentivized people and didn't issue mandates, and it's an honest mistake people's memories are fallible. There has been a study undertaken that shows that people's recollection of an event just 30 seconds ago already can become impaired. Could it be that when he's recalling events of some three years ago, was it the case that his memory is fallible? Well, it is a possibility, but I would suggest that, that is not the applicable answer. The reason being is that something as monumental as the COVID pandemic and your response to it is going to stick large in the memory. And therefore, a simple case of him having a fallible memory in that regard does not stack up. And therefore, we remove that also as a possibility. This then leads us to this possibility. That it is a lie, but it is his truth. Namely... In the particular moment of when he says it, i.e., when he was having the conversation just recently with the German president, that it is his honest belief that he's telling the truth at that point, that he incentivized people. Or, at that point, he knows he didn't incentivize people, but he says that he did, and he knows that he's lying. Either way, it would appear that a lie has been told, 
because the evidence exists that shows that he did issue mandates, he didn't issue incentives, and there's evidence showing him saying, I gave incentives for people to get immunized rather than force them to do so. The problem that he has, of course, is that as a prominent individual and leader, much of what he says and does is recorded, either in print, in audio, or sometimes in video, as it has been here. So two video clips exist. One of him, in 2023, saying, I gave incentives for people to get immunized rather than force them to do so. And then a clip from 2022, talking about previous events, where he states, mandates. Two different things. And the evidence shows that he said two different things. I don't accept that it is a fallibility of memory, and it's been proven that he's not correct with what he said. That means that there's either a lie that has been told in an unaware state, or it's a deliberate lie that he knows full well that he's lying, but he simply does not care. It might be that he has given a contradictory response because his perception at the time in 2023 causes him to believe that previously he didn't issue a mandate and that he actually did issue incentives, even though the evidence shows that is not the case. Alternatively, he knows full well what he's doing. Where does this take us all to in terms of him being a narcissist? Well, as I regularly explain to you, you can't make a judgment off just one instance. What you must do is look at a range of evidence from a range of different sources over a sustained period of time. But this instance of itself shows that he has told a lie. It's a large lie, and it's one that's easily shown to be a lie. Therefore, it might be that he knows that he's telling a lie and he deems that it's expedient for him to do so. That doesn't mean that necessarily he's a narcissist because non-narcissists tell lies and know that they do so. Accordingly, it might be, for instance, that he's simply narcissistic but not a narcissist or he might be a normal that's telling a lie. Even empaths tell lies, but I would suggest that a lie of this scale and extent would not be issued by an empath. And therefore, in the circumstances, we would discount that. I don't see that there is any external stressor reducing his emotional empathy, assuming he has some, that would support this is an empath telling a lie. So we can discount that. The lie is too sizable, and there is an absence of external stressors. This therefore leaves us with the following options. He's a normal person, knowing that he's telling a lie because he deems it politically expedient to do so. Or he's a narcissistic person, telling a lie, again because he knows that he's doing so, and he deems it to be politically expedient. Alternatively, he is a narcissist, and either he's a greater who knows that he's lying but he simply doesn't care, or that he's a lesser or mid-range narcissist that doesn't realise that he's lying, because his narcissism avoids him knowing that that's what he's doing. And it's an honest but mistaken recall, not a fallibility of memory, but rather the rewriting of history occasioned by his narcissism. What we see here is a blatant rewriting of history. The evidence supports that. The evidence shows that. And therefore we can say very clearly that Justin Trudeau has rewritten history. What we then ask is, has he rewritten history as a normal or narcissistic person, therefore knowing that he's telling a lie, but that doesn't make him necessarily a narcissist? Or has he told a lie as a narcissist and either has done so knowing full well that it is a lie and he simply doesn't care because he's a greater or that he honestly believes he's telling the truth, although he is lying because his lies are his truth and he's an unaware lesser or unaware mid-range narcissist. We can't give the answer to that question on this instance alone, but what we can say without any doubt is that Justin Trudeau has engaged in the revision of history, that he has rewritten past events and that he has told 
a lie. Therefore, what we have is a substantial narcissistic indicator, which we then will have to look at alongside further evidence, which will be forthcoming in future videos, to make a determination as to what he is. What I can say is he's not an empathic individual, and this certainly isn't a healthy starting point for the examination of Justin Trudeau. He has revised history. Anybody can do that, because as I've taught you, anybody can engage in the behaviours that a narcissist does. The difference is frequency, depth, sustained behaviours, and of course, the driver. For a narcissist to engage in these behaviours, it's a different driver for that compared to a non-narcissist. Thus, as I continue in forthcoming videos to examine Justin Trudeau's behaviour to determine what he is, what we can say is we know for certain that he's revised history, we know that he's told a lie, and therefore we have our first major narcissistic indicator in determining what he might be as we continue our examination of him. Join me in future videos as we examine more evidence to see if we can find more narcissist indicators to determine what Justin Trudeau is. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.